Antonio starts right now. Making headlines this morning, the city of San Antonio launches a special program to help the homeless who in, are in need during the pandemic. Governors on both coasts teaming up with plans to potentially reopen their states for business. I'm Alex Pache in Washington. I'll have those details coming up. And taking a look outside with live cams. Cool out there this morning once again. Mike is standing by with your forecast. Good morning to you. It is Tuesday. It is April 14th. I walked outside. I was like, it can't be April. I know it feels more like fall out there, although it's mid April. I mean, that feels good, though. Can we oh. keep it for a little while, Dad? Uh, at least another day. Tomorrow's okay. going to be another fantastic day, another cool morning. That's going to be it then. But oh my gosh, what was yesterday just perfect? Well, it wasn't perfect because it was so windy and the pollen was killing me. Okay, never mind then. I'm going to uh, vote it was perfect dog walking weather nonetheless. Yeah, it, it was pretty nice to, to get out and walk the dog. So, yeah, the pollen is high, unfortunately. I'm ready for it to go away. Uh, uh, yeah, it's going to be wild. I'm kind of surprised, though, that mold is. I'm going to show you that in a second. First of all, cameras pointed off to the east and uh, it's getting ready for another fantastic sunrise. Of course, yesterday's was spectacular and just it was blue skies. Now, we are going to have a few more clouds hanging around today. Still, it's going to be a fantastic day. 50 here in town, 45 up the road toward uh, Bernie stage, mid 40s out in the hill country. And once again, there's a little bit of a breeze, not as windy as yesterday, but there's enough out there to put some uh, wind chills out there. Bernie stage right around 40, 39, Kerrville, 37 in Lost Maples. And of course, once we get down just below 50, then the wind chill formula is going to be kicking in here. But obviously, it feels a little cooler than what it is. Wind is out of the north to northeast again at about 10, 15, close to 20 miles per hour. And yeah, oh, really, really shot. It was almost nothing a couple of days ago. Really shot up yesterday. Mold is also on the high side. A little surprising with that, given the fact we have such dry air around here. Hopefully, it's going to be drying out a little bit uh, today or dropping down with the dry air. 60 at noon, 68 for a high temperature. Partly cloudy skies, so a few more clouds hanging around here. Winds out of the northeast at 10 to 20 miles per hour. Like I said, tomorrow's going to be another really nice kind of fallish sort of day. This can be back to spring, maybe a couple of showers later on. Details coming up in a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now. Here's the man, the myth, the legend, Officer Marcus Trujillo. Good morning, Mike. And man, I hate to see what the pollen count is today after all that wind we had yesterday, shaking the trees and stuff. So, yeah, just add it to the list. Right now, as we take a look at the roadways, uh, still looking pretty good. So no issues at this point, but it is still early. Let's take a look at Transguide. 2 to 1 at Hillerbrand, north and southbound lane so far, no problems there. 35 at Evans, also looking pretty good in both directions. Moving over to Fortin and Callahan, we see no issues. And a check at I-10 to Hillerbrand. You can see eastbound and westbound lanes so far, smooth sailing. Mark and Leslie. Thanks, Marcus. It's been a month since the first case of COVID-19 was announced here in Bear County. In four weeks' time, nearly 800 positive cases have been identified. The latest case is a San Antonio firefighter. Fire Chief Charles Hood says they've started a contact tracing investigation. That firefighter at last worked on April 7th. He began showing symptoms three days later on April 10th and saw a primary care physician. Chief Hood says the firefighter has not been back to work since. He also says... All their employees get screenings twice a day, use personal protective equipment, and conduct extensive decontamination of their equipment. Here's a look at the latest numbers. We know more than 8,800 tests have been taken. 794 of those tests returned positive results. Of those cases, 88 people had to be placed in the hospital for care. Deaths have also increased now at 33. There have also been 135 recoveries. Meanwhile, outside of San Antonio, community spread now confirmed in Kendall County. They have a total of 12 cases of the disease with one in Fair Oaks Ranch, seven in Bernie. Kamau County reporting an increase in cases and deaths. There are now 38 confirmed cases with six deaths there. Hayes County has 93 cases along with one death. Guadalupe County lists 50 confirmed cases of COVID-19. Bandera County has a second case. And finally, Atascosa County has nine cases, Medina County with 13, and Wilson County reporting 11. The city of San Antonio has now launched a homeless connections hotline. It links people experiencing homelessness to resources and mental health assistance. 75 calls have already been made since the hotline went live. The city is currently working on outreach efforts to make sure this vulnerable population has the hotline phone number and knows what help is available. It comes at a critical time when homeless shelters have shut down intake to keep population numbers low and safe from COVID-19. What we're seeing right now is really um, folks who were sort of in a precarious state before, but now may be experiencing a little bit more um, 
of a difficult situation because of the the virus, the pandemic. Um, so a lot of calls are folks who have been living maybe week to week in a hotel. Uh, now their 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 income is dried up and they don't have a place to go. The efforts have been made possible thanks to partnerships with local nonprofits and churches. The Homeless Connection Hotline, by the way, is 210-207-1799. We have more information on KSAT.com. By now it is 435. President Trump defending his record Monday night in a lengthy and spirited press conference. The president also pushing for the country to reopen. And this is all sparking a debate over whether he can actually force that to happen. ABC's Alex Preysha has more from Washington. President Trump defending his coronavirus response. I don't mind being criticized, but not when they're wrong. In a not lengthy Monday briefing, he played a campaign style video while taking aim at the coverage of this outbreak. President Trump highlighting his decision to restrict travel from China in late January. But he was then pressed on what the administration did in February, a month during which he's accused of downplaying the threat. What did your administration do in February with the time that your travel ban bought? A lot. A lot. And in fact, we'll give you a list. What we did, in fact, part of it was up there. It we did a lot. Did look, look, you know you're a fake. As for the decision on when to ease social distancing and reopen the economy. When somebody's the president of the United States, the authority is total. And that's the way it's got to be. A point contested by constitutional experts. They say the president can issue guidelines, but the authority to close businesses during a public health crisis lies with the states, not the federal government. You said when someone is president of the United States, their authority is total. That is not true. Who, who okay, you know what we're going to do? We're going to write up papers on this. It's not going to be necessary because the governors need us one way or the other. But governors from seven states in the east and three on the west coast are making it clear they will act in the best interests of their own states when it comes to easing restrictions. Two separate groups have formed with the goal of developing a regional plan to jointly reopen. Also, we saw Dr. Anthony Fauci walk back comments from the weekend about the administration's inaction, saying that the president listened to his recommendations and then went on to mitigation. This comes a day after the president retweeted a message critical of Fauci with the hashtag fire Fauci. Alex Perche, ABC News, Washington. Tuesday morning, 437. We're just getting started. It is 50 degrees. Still ahead, the coronavirus can affect different people in different ways. Now, Oprah Winfrey is trying to bring awareness to a group that's been hit exceptionally hard. And next, a federal court upholds an earlier ruling that blocks a ban on abortion in Texas during the COVID-19 pandemic. And live cam giving us a look outside. Mike says we're in for another beautiful day today, another spring-like day tomorrow, too. He has details. For 40 in your morning headlines, North Korea has fired what appears to be missiles between Japan and the Korean Peninsula. The South Korean military says North Korea fired a number of projectiles early this morning. They're believed to be short-range cruise missiles. These images are from March 21st when North Korean leader Kim Jong-un observed the launching of other missiles. Well, two federal courts have ruled to uphold lower court decisions that stop restrictions on abortions in Texas and Oklahoma. Both states had deemed abortions not essential and ordered them delayed during the COVID-19 pandemic unless the mother's life was threatened. The court in Texas ruled medication abortions must continue, but left the larger abortion ban to a lower court that is still considering it. In Oklahoma, circuit court upheld a restraining order allowing abortions if waiting would make it impossible to obtain one later. The decision also upholds a requirement that non-surgical medication abortions must be permitted. Rutgers University says healthcare workers could soon have access to another test for the coronavirus. University announced the FDA has approved a test developed at one of its labs. According to Rutgers, the test uses saliva of patients to analyze for the virus. They believe this will allow more people to be screened than the current method, which uses nose and throat swabs. Scientists also claim their test will put fewer healthcare professionals at risk of an infection. The test is already available at some medical facilities in the state of New Jersey. I I'm looking forward to that day we wake up and report to everyone. We have testing widespread, easy, results will come back, antibodies will be known, and we'll have information. Or a day we have no coronavirus headlines whatsoever. Oh, hallelujah. Amen to that. 442, 50 degrees. Bill had a look at how some of the newest movie releases are doing after skipping their normal theatrical release and going straight to home video. Up next, many local businesses struggling to make ends meet. Some even have had to close their doors. How one bakery is making changes in order to stay open.
The coronavirus is taking an exceptionally hard toll on particular groups of people. Well, now Oprah speaking out, hoping to bring awareness to the issue. ABC's T.J. Holmes has details in your GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, one-on-one -on -one with Oprah Winfrey. Oprah talks COVID-19, the deadly impact on black America. And premieres today on Apple TV. And this morning, she's speaking out to Good Morning America. I wanted to be able to respond to this moment in the same way that you all are doing and that everybody who has a voice should be doing. And I realized, actually, when I heard Van Jones um, articulate in the language that connected and that people could understand. Like if you have, we've been hearing that if you have pre-existing pre conditions, that just sort of goes over people's heads or not even going over their head. You just don't hear it the same way you hear. Are you taking pills for diabetes? Are you taking pills for hypertension? If Much more of our interview coming up at 7 a.m. With your GMA First Look, I'm TJ Holmes, it's ABC News, New York. From restaurants to hair salons, small businesses have been hit hard in recent weeks. <coughs> Excuse me, especially those that have had to close their doors. But even so-called essential businesses that are still open are not untouched. You need water? I'm just got a tickle in my throat, that's okay. all. 12 on your side's Marilyn Moritz revisits a half-century-old family bakery that's making adjustments to get through these tough times. When we visited Lux Bakery in January, the factory was on full throttle, turning out dinner rolls, gingerbread, and Mexican pastries. Less than three months later, the pandemic has taken a bite out of business. Our business has pretty much slowed down since we distribute a lot to school districts uh, throughout the state of Texas. With classrooms closed, Vice President John Zambrano says new orders are halted and sales to grocery bakeries have taken a hit. So production has slowed and days are shorter. I think I'll start getting nervous right around June or July. Uh, if if uh, it looks like, you know, kids aren't going to be going back to school. For now, they adjust. Employees in masks and gloves stand spaced apart. Uh, we're implementing now the temperature reading for our employees as they come in the door. They're having to be a little inventive doing things differently, like co-packing. They're offering to put other businesses' products into packages. As many small businesses have had to stop operations and payroll, Zambrano says the bakery is fortunate and he's hopeful things get back to normal soon. Marilyn Moritz, KSAT 12 News. 447, we're hoping things are starting out on the quiet side commuting wise. Let's find out. Marcus, how is it looking this morning? Well, so far, no issues out there. As we take a look at the map, you can see that uh, everything in the green, green is good. That means uh, there are no delays out there. So we're going to take a look at a couple of TransGuide cameras. I'm going to start off down here by the airport area. Let's see if I hit the right button. There we go. Hey, I should play the lottery. 281 and 410, uh, both directions still running smoothly of 410. Up above there, you can see those connector apps so far. No problems for the uh, connector ramps between those two major highways. 35 there at 37, the downtown interchange so far looking pretty good. Highway 90 at 36. Not too many folks out there, but believe it or not, we will have a significant amount of uh, traffic here in a little bit. Highway 90 always just a little bit busier than that, even with this stay home, work safe. Yes, sir. Thank, Thank you very much. The, mute, the moon has been beautiful yeah, the last couple of nights. Yeah, when you've got a real picture behind you. And clear skies. It's a beauty. Yeah, that's a gorgeous one. So that's uh, at the third quarter. So this is like halfway now. It's a, a waning gibbous, as it's known as, which means it's approaching the new moon oh, phase, which is going to be next uh, <laughs> Thursday on the 23rd. So. But it's beautiful. Take a look at this picture close up of it there. And I love the caption. Photo taken this morning, obviously yesterday morning, obsessed with moon photos also. Which, yeah, when you get a nice, big, clear, beautiful picture of the moon like that, I think everybody's kind of obsessed with it. It's gorgeous. Thank you very much for the KSAT Connect picture. Keep sending those pictures in. Get a bunch of them with all the, the blue bonnets out there. And just something to kind of look at to start off our day. Uh, what we're going to be looking at in a couple of hours is a beautiful sunrise again. Now there's a few high clouds out there. We're at 50 degrees right now. 40 is going out in toward the hill country. And yes, there is a bit of a wind chill. And once again, the formulas don't really 
come into play if temperatures are at 50 or above, but it obviously does feel a little bit cooler out there. Once we drop to 49, then the wind chill will show up out there at the airport, but it feels like 39 right now in Bernie, 39 also in Kerrville and 44 up the road in Balverde and still got really, really dry air in place, which is nice. The wind is out of the north. It's not as breezy as yesterday, but still a decent breeze out there, especially for this time of the morning, and we're going to have enough of a breeze this afternoon that you'll kind of notice it. Again, I don't think it's going to be quite as windy as what it was yesterday. Humidity is going to be staying low throughout the rest of today as well as tomorrow. These dew point temperatures will be staying very, very low. Of course, 60 is that magic number, if you will, the threshold when it gets above that and you start to feel the humidity a little more. But I mean, all the way through tomorrow and then even into tomorrow night. But notice how by tomorrow night, the wind lines, surface wind lines are really starting to shift around to the east to southeast. So that will then after tomorrow night, start to pull in the humidity. So tomorrow's going to be the last of the nice cool mornings and then beautiful afternoons. We'll start to see a lot more uh, humidity holding temperatures up then because temperatures can't drop down below what the dew point temperatures are. So as we get more humidity Wednesday night into Thursday, we will stay much, much milder. Still got a lot of very dry air uh, upstairs in the atmosphere, but a little more moisture is starting to work its way in here. So maybe a milky shade to the sky, some of those uh, well, sort of high wispy clouds and even a couple of low clouds hanging around here today. And so therefore, yeah, we are going to have a few more than yesterday because yesterday was, I mean, looks wise, just about perfect. Uh, nothing showing up on the uh, satellite picture as of right now, though. And just up to the north of us, that is not a mistake. That is some uh, that's some wintry precipitation showing up up there in parts of the panhandle. Obviously, it's all sliding up or it's sliding off to the east of us, but um, it's just a good indication that this is a very unusual, very late season, very cold air mass that's covering a good chunk of the country right now. 60 today at noon, partly cloudy skies. And again, a few clouds are going to be hanging around here, but still a beautiful day. Upper 60s and wind out of the northeast at 10, maybe 20 miles per hour. So again, slight bit of a breeze out there. Tomorrow, another cool morning. And then Thursday will still be cool-ish uh, in the morning, but then it's continuing to warm up a little bit more. And then by Friday, we start to see a couple of showers move on in here and even Saturday, a couple of showers. There is another front which will try to move through and boy, long range computer models are not in agreement with this as far as what our temperatures are going to be on Saturday. I'm kind of splitting one model says mid 60s, one says up to 80 kind of splitting the difference as of right now, but we will get back up into the 80s by Sunday and Monday, but still a couple more days of just really pretty weather. Yeah, and that wind was an issue yesterday and we see that little shake to the downtown live cam camera right now too. Mm -hmm. So breeze continues. And when it's this nice, you got to cut your grass if you need to. Yeah, finally knocked it out the other yeah, day. Yeah, but prepare for the pollen. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right. Thank you, Mike. Right now we're at 452, 50 degrees. Coming up next, the newest Trolls animated movie breaking different kinds of records after skipping its theatrical release and going straight to streaming. Your pick three numbers, 911 with a fireball four, daily four numbers, 9422, two, fireball three. And your cash five numbers, 3411, 1335. Texas two step, 322, 30, 33 with a bonus ball of three. In your morning spotlight, lots of new movies available for streaming this week. For the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Jason Nathanson. Black leather glove, no sequence. Drake sliding into the top spot once again on the Billboard Hot 100 singles chart. His new song, Deucey Slime, debuting at number one. It's the third time he's had a song go straight to the top in its first week. And he's now the only male solo artist to achieve that feat. And only one woman has had three number one debuts, Mariah Carey. On the Billboard 200 album chart, it's another number one for the weekend. His album, After Hours, scores its third straight week in the top spot. Yeah, yes, Papa Fur? Trolls World Tour also setting a record. Universal says the animated film, which debuted on streaming video Friday, had the biggest ever debut for a digital release. What that means in terms of actual numbers, though, we don't know. Trolls World Tour was the first major studio release to skip the movie theaters and go straight to home streaming during the coronavirus shutdown. The it's here. And two new movies available today for streaming, the Blumhouse horror film Fantasy Island and the Matthew McConaughey, Charlie Hunnam action comedy The Gentleman. And a big birthday today for single parent star Brad Garrett. He's 60, while actress Sarah Michelle Gellar is 43. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Jason Athenson, ABC News, Los Angeles. 
about three minutes till 50 degrees. Still ahead in our next half hour, how Ron, Mayor Ron Nirenberg is making sure children aren't being left out of the coronavirus conversation. Plus, fast food restaurants like Burger King offering free, free food right now. More on that coming up in Tech Bites. Live from Chase at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Making headlines at the top of the hour, Governor Greg Abbott gets ready to show his plan for reopening certain Texas businesses. Plus, a woman sentenced to six years in prison for a deadly drunk driving crash is free on bond. What's next in her case? And outside with live cam, Mike's forecast, two words. Great again. Good morning, everybody. It is Tuesday. It is April 14th. Thanks for being with us this morning. Yeah, other than the wind, it's really beautiful out there. Nice and cool. You need a, a sweater or a light jacket this morning. Mike, how are we doing? Doing fantastic. I mean, yesterday was absolutely beautiful. Today is going to be uh, probably not as pretty. I've got a few, couple of extra clouds out there, but still, it's going to be just a fantastic day. And we are starting off absolutely wonderful. 49 now out there at the airport. Kerrville, 44, 43 up in Rock Springs, and still 51 in Pleasanton. And we've got still very dry air in place. There's still also a breeze, so that 49 degrees feels a little bit cooler than that. Some of the wind chill temperatures as of right now around the area are down in the uh, 40s, even a couple of uh, 30s out in portions of the Hill Country. Feels like 45 at the airport right now, 39 Bernie Stage, 37 in Lost Maples. Yes, a jacket, sweater, sweatshirts, uh, maybe a little bit of all of the above. It's a pretty good idea this morning and uh, throughout the rest of today. It's going to be, again, fantastic. We will still keep a bit of a breeze around here, though, and so yeah, you kind of notice it. And we'll make it up into the upper 60s later on today, so it may feel just a, a tad cooler than that, but still a great day. Now, the only problem being the allergens. I mean, Oak was almost nothing a couple of days ago after some of the rain over the weekend and really, really came back up. So we're obviously not done with that season as of yet. Mold really shot up. That hopefully will be going down given the fact we have such dry air in place and little bits of everything else. So as far as the rest of today, mostly clear and cool and then a couple of extra clouds hanging around here today. So like looks wise, not quite as beautiful as yesterday, but still fantastic. Nice cool temperatures about uh, 10 degrees below normal, maybe a little more than that for high and a slight bit of a breeze today. Another cool, beautiful day tomorrow. And then the humidity starts to come back in here on Thursday. We'll have more clouds around and a couple of showers are possible Friday, maybe into Saturday. Then we'll get back up kind of a reality check by the end of the weekend. Back to the 80s by Sunday. Details in just a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now. Here's Officer Marcus Trujillo. Anything going on yet, sir? Well, Mike, so far, Still quiet and hopefully it stays that way. And yesterday was the first time in, in a long time that we went the entire uh, the entire show and then actually the entire morning commute without accidents on the highway. So let's right down, take a look. You can see traffic looks pretty good as far as the map's concerned. Moving over to Transguide, 410 and Jackson Keller. No issues there and north and southbound lanes of 35 here just in the downtown area by 37 still look pretty good. No issues, 410 at Callahan. And as we check on one more camera, we can move over to 35 at 410. So far, things are looking pretty good. Mark. Thank you, Marcus. New this morning, San Antonio police looking for five people they say were involved in an early morning robbery. It happened in the 17,000 block of Vance Jackson on the northwest side near the Rim Shopping Center. According to police, just after 1 a.m., a man in his 20s was apparently jumped by four men and a woman. SAPD says they took the man's backpack, then took off in a vehicle towards Loop 6204 at a high rate of speed. Police are still investigating why that robbery happened. If you have any information, call SAPD. Later today, San Antonio Mayor Ron Nirenberg says he hopes to have data available to share about predicting when the city will hit its peak of coronavirus cases. Right now, the latest numbers show we sit just under 800 confirmed cases in Bear County. Right now, the city has community health and prevention teams looking to target vulnerable communities and arm them with information. Zip codes with high risks of contracting COVID-19 and communities dealing with health disparities are just some of the factors being considered before these teams for Metro Health are dispatched. Right now, there are about 13,900 cases of COVID-19 across Texas, and Governor Greg Abbott says he will soon release his strategy to reopen certain businesses. That is expected later this week, but he says loosening up on restrictions needs to be done in a safe way that doesn't allow for another outbreak. He says his plan will be aligned with medical analysis. We have to understand that we must reopen in a way in which we are able to stimulate the economy while at the very same time ensuring that we contain the spread of COVID-19. 
Governor Abbott is also offering a $50 million small business initiative to help people struggling with the impact of the coronavirus. This has been made possible by a partnership between Goldman Sachs and the Lyft Fund. Applications for small business loans can be made at liftfund.com. Well, children are not being left out of the coronavirus conversation. San Antonio Mayor Ron Nirenberg hosted a digital town hall for some of the city's youngest minds. One young man asked if he could ride his bike under the stay home, work safe order. The answer, Lucas, is yes. You can ride your bike out in quarantine um, as long as you have your parents' permission, as long as you're riding safely. But after you're done with that and after you st you're staying six feet away from other people, come back home. We don't want you out there too long. We want you to come back home after you get the fresh air. The mayor and Justice Luz Chapa helped answer questions. Justice Chapa with the Fourth Court of Appeals has battled COVID-19 for about a month now and says she is on the mend and another step closer to seeing her family in person. To see the Children's Town Hall or just to read more about Justice Chapa's journey, go to KSAT.com. As most people are limiting trips to the grocery store, the United States Department of Agriculture has created an app to help you cut down on food waste. It's called the Food Keeper app and explains which foods can be frozen and for how long. For instance, you can freeze milk for about three months and bread can be stored in the freezer for two to three months. For more information, head on over to KSAT.com. And with so many people staying home, it might be the perfect time to work on construction projects. Assistant City Manager Rod Sanchez says not only is it easier to move heavy equipment on site, but it keeps essential projects going like low income housing. It's just one of the several stories you'll find at KSAT.com. Our web team also keeping track of the coronavirus pandemic. You can find the latest numbers on KSAT.com. Driving drunk on a sidewalk two summers ago, Rosalinda Olalde killed another motorist. And though she was sentenced to six years in prison, she is free on bond. Paul Venema with an explanation and reaction from the victim's family. Just over a month ago, the trial of 24-year-old Rosalinda Olalde on intoxication, manslaughter, and assault charges ended. We assessed her punishment at the confinement at the, in the Institutional Division of the Texas Department of Criminal Justice for a term of six years. Driving drunk, Olalde crashed into a car, killing 22-year-old Mario Velasquez Palau and injuring four passengers in his car. Olalde immediately filed an appeal to her sentence and was freed on bond pending the results. We're just frustrated because it seems like she's just trying to avoid any consequences. We just want her to, we just want justice. She said that the delay only extends her family's pain. It does upset me because it's like, just take responsibility. That's, that's all you could do now, take responsibility for a life that you took. Adding to their frustration, Velasquez said, is the time involved as the appeal works its way through the appeals courts. That could take months, perhaps years. Paul Venom, my case at 12 News. Right now it's 507, 49 degrees. Still ahead, restaurant chains continue to try to earn business from customers. This time Burger King is giving out free Whoppers. Tell you how you can get one. And next, automaker Ford is working to make sure the country has enough ventilators to deal with the COVID-19 crisis. Live cam giving us a look outside and for a couple more beautiful days. So happy to have you with us this morning. We'll be back. Welcome back, everybody. It's 11 minutes after 5. In your morning consumer headlines, Ford is kicking off production of a new respirator face mask for medical workers. The company says it will start making the mask at its plant in Flat Rock, Michigan today. The device was designed in partnership with 3M, and it uses a fan from ventilated car seats. It works by filtering contaminants from the air before drawing purified air through a tube. The plan is to make at least 100,000 masks. Ford is not saying when they'll be delivered, I also said starting next Monday, it will be making 100,000 reusable medical gowns per week. Those will be made from airbag materials. Samuel Adams Brewery expanding its program to help unemployed bar and restaurant workers. The company says its Restaurant Strong Fund, which was kicked off in Massachusetts last month, is now being launched in 19 other states, including Texas. The goal is to give $1,000 to industry workers who lost their jobs because of the coronavirus outbreak. To qualify, they had to be full-time employees at the same restaurant, bar, or nightclub for at least three months. Sam Adams says the fund has raised more than $2.7 million to help. The brewery will be accepting applications from unemployed workers through April 30th. 
Taco Bell wants to remind everyone we're all in this coronavirus fight together. The fast food chain is giving away free Doritos Locos Tacos for the third week in a row. Taco Bell CEO started the Free Taco Tuesday back in March. It's a thank you for everything communities are doing to help. Right now, it's just about uh, 513. We're at 49 degrees. Still ahead, one major movie studio trying to bring people together to watch movies again and support theater employees who are out of a job. Up next, Taco Bell isn't the only place giving out free food. Burger King giving out free Whoppers. We'll tell you how to get one. To all the people questioning right now, questioning, is now a good time for us to invest? Should I refinance my house? Do twins mean twice the insurance? How can I get my credit score to go up? Can I afford to do this? Can I afford not to? Are there credit card perks for pizza? To all those simply questioning, where do I go with all these questions? We've got your back. For all your money questions, turn to the nerds. Since everyone's at home, binge button all. Planet Fitness is bringing the judgment-free zone to you. Join us on Facebook Live for daily home work-ins. Plus, we put our gym in your pocket with workouts for everyone. Planet Fitness, united we move. Everyone seems to have a different opinion on what you should be eating. But the power of plants is one thing we can all agree on. V8, the original plant power drink. Veg up. 516 Amazon putting new food delivery customers on a wait list as the site deals with a surge in demand. ABC's Kenneth Moten has details in today's Tech Bites. In today's Tech Bites, a waiting list for new Amazon grocery delivery customers. The company is temporarily asking new Amazon Fresh and Whole Foods Market customers to sign up for an invitation to use the services. Amazon is also adding 75,000 more workers. Next, a growing number of axe throwers are using video platforms to stay sharp. They've formed the Quarantine Axe Throwing League so they can compete even while in isolation. The head of the league says it's been such a hit, it will continue after quarantining ends. Students can now take advantage of a whopper of a deal. Burger King has started a new coronavirus related promo. The chain is posting a question each day on its social media platforms. Students who answer correctly will be eligible to get a free whopper with any purchase. It's have it your way, student edition. Those are your tech bites. Have a great day. Hopefully you can have it your way on the roadways today. That would be good. 517, here's Marcus. As long as that doesn't include the speed, you do pretty much have, you know, have it your <laughs> way out there. Uh, just watch that speed because uh, it's very, very easy to let that speed get away from you uh, as easy as that commute is right now. Not too many folks in the road. Conditions are dry, a little cool, a little dark. 35, 410, no issues there. Moving over to Highway 90, 36. We're starting to see a little bit of increase in the traffic there, but it's really not going to get to what we're used to seeing due to this uh, stay home, work safe. So just keep that in mind. Uh, watch those uh, those turns and those curves, but also put away those distractions this morning. Those uh, phones, coffee cups, because you get complacent and that's when accidents happen. We want everybody to arrive safely at their destination. We agree 100 percent. My microphone is now open, so I'll talk. <laughs> Leslie's back with us after a long weekend. Good yeah, to have you with thank us. Thank you. It was nice to take a day off and not think about news for a day, but now I'm yeah. glad to be back. Especially when you picked a day like yesterday. It was such a nice, except yeah. for the wind. Well, it was a little bit on the breezy side, yes, and we do have a breeze this morning, and so there's... If we didn't have the oak pile to deal with, I wouldn't complain about the wind. Right, and the mold and all that stuff. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. But, and but it's still show. nice. So it's still so gorgeous. What does the wind, all that wind mean for all the pollen? You know, I, I guess it's still shaking up the oak trees like it does the mountain cedar trees. Some oh, our pool's so. a nightmare. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah, well, yeah. Anyway, um, that's what I have to say about it. Oh, okay. At least I'm not sniffling quite as much as what I was. Beautiful shot of the moon, which is now at its uh, three-quarter moon, the last half, if you will, before it becomes a, a new moon next week. And it's a great shot looking over the top of the Tower of the Americas. Thank you for the KSAC Connect picture. We are going to be seeing a beautiful sunrise again this morning with a lot of uh, clear skies out there. A couple of high wispy clouds. That's about it. 45 Halotus, 43 up uh, Bernie Stage, 47 Balverde, mid-40s in the Hill Country. Yep, got another wind chill to deal with this morning. Just knock off a couple of degrees, but a jacket is a good idea, obviously, if you're stepping outside. We do still have very dry 
air with these dew points. The measure moisture in the atmosphere down to the uh, 30s right now. Winds out of the north at about 10, 15 miles per hour. We've got a couple of uh, couple of gusts out there. 17 at the airport, 22 down around Laredo. It won't be as windy as yesterday, but obviously still enough of a breeze out there throughout the rest of the day. So you will uh, kind of notice it. But again, I don't think it's going to be as windy as yesterday. Uh, a couple of days ago, we had just bone dry air. Yesterday it was still very dry with uh, the darker shade of gray. Now it's kind of lightening up a little bit. So maybe a little extra moisture aloft in the atmosphere. So perhaps a milky shade of the sky. Some of those high clouds out there. We'll keep a few clouds around today. So it won't be maybe as picture perfect as yesterday, but still gorgeous out there. And as far as the humidity the next couple of days, it is going to remain on the low side. So we'll continue to have another good looking morning tomorrow. Another cool morning, another cool morning on Thursday, and then the humidity is going to make a return because you notice by tomorrow night we start to get a little bit of a flow coming in here from the southeast. Again, we'll still have enough low humidity to allow temperatures to drop down into the 40s again Thursday morning. That'll be it. Then we get the humidity and the cloud cover and some rain chances to come back in here. Obviously nothing is showing up on the uh, satellite picture right now. And yes, that is wintry precipitation, some snow up there in the northern portion of the state because it is definitely cold up there. Now, as far as any clouds the next couple of days, nothing really, you know, one or two of them out there. That's going to be about the extent of it by Thursday. Then we really start to see clouds move on in here. Friday chance for a few showers and perhaps a little better chance for a couple of showers around here coming in on uh, Saturday. Then we'll clear out and then we're really going to heat back up by Sunday. So back to kind of mid to late spring temperatures by Sunday. 60 today at noon, partly cloudy skies, a lot of high clouds out there today, and then 68 for a high temperature. Still a breeze out of the northeast at uh, 10, 20 miles per hour. Tomorrow morning, another cool one down in the 40s. Same thing Thursday morning. We get up into the low 70s tomorrow, mid 70s on Thursday. More clouds around on Thursday, and then Friday with the extra humidity. Obviously, we're not going to be as cool in the morning. We have a couple of showers possible on Friday. There is a bit of a front moving through Saturday. Long range computer models still don't agree on the exact temperatures, what that's going to be. And then Sunday, definitely back to the mid 80s. What are you doing over there? My chair literally just sank before we took this camera shot over here. How low can you, you go? Apparently all the way down. So it's more like uh, sitting at the kids you. table at Thanksgiving. It does feel like that. <laughs> right. I know. Uh, yeah, stand right behind me. Yeah, you're too close. Move you're this too way. Close. Yeah, too close. right now, 522, 49 degrees. Up next, another big summer movie delayed because of coronavirus. More on when Disney plans to release its newest Pixar film. We may have come up short on our stools, but we still have your lottery numbers. Pick three, nine, one, one, fireball four, daily four, nine, four, two, two, fireball three. And your cash five numbers, three, four, 11, 13, 35. Your Texas two step, three, 22, 30, 33, and a bonus ball three. Five twenty-five. Plenty of movie news today. A huge digital debut and an animated film pushed back by the pandemic. Plus, popular movies are set to stream live on YouTube. CNN's David Daniel has details in your Hollywood Minute. Tiny, tiny diamond is my name. Trolls World Tour is off to a great start. Universal says the animated sequel had the best opening day and opening weekend ever for a digital film release. It debuted on digital platforms Friday, the day it was supposed to open in theaters, so it had the advertising push of a theatrical release. No specific numbers yet from Universal on the Trolls Big Weekend. I did it! I got the Yet another big summer movie has bowed to the inevitable. Disney has moved the Pixar film Soul, originally scheduled to debut in theaters June 19th, back five months to November 20th, as it remains unclear when the coronavirus pandemic will allow theaters to reopen. Time has come to select one courageous young man and woman for the honor of representing District 12 in the 74th annual Hunger Games. Lionsgate is trying to bring people together 
together to watch movies again and support idled theater employees. Beginning this Friday with The Hunger Games, the studio is streaming four of its most famous titles live, Fridays at 9 p.m. Eastern on the Lionsgate and Fandango Movie Clips YouTube channels. Viewers will have the chance to donate to the Will Rogers Foundation, which is helping theater workers who've been furloughed due to the COVID-19 crisis. May the odds eventually be in their favor. In Hollywood, I'm David Daniel. What a great movie. I no love kidding. The Hunger Games. I know. I still catch them every now and then on cable. Yeah, they're good. You can watch them several times. You always get something new because so much goes on. I, I agree with you 100%. 527 right now, 49 degrees. Still ahead in our next half hour, Uncle Sam is opening his wallet and starting to send out stimulus checks when you can expect yours. Plus, in campaign 2020, Joe Biden wins Wisconsin, even picks up an endorsement of a key former Democratic rival. And talk about good timing. More than a business owner who decided to start a toilet paper company just as the pandemic started. Rise and shine. Good morning to you. It is Tuesday, April 14th. Thanks for being with us this morning. I don't know why Mother Nature decided to smile so much on us at this time of year, but it's feeling like fall out there again. We are blessed yet again, and we've dropped into the 40s. Yeah, it, it's just fantastic out there. Uh, grab a jacket. Once again, there's still, it's not as windy as yesterday, but there's still a light breeze out there. And of course, this is, picture is going to be, this view is going to be filled with some beautiful bright sunshine and a gorgeous sunrise again. And a couple little stars are even showing up. So obviously we've got a lot of clear skies. I think we'll have a few more clouds though today as compared to yesterday. Still a, a fantastic day. 49 in town, 47 Valverde, mid 40s out toward the hill country. And yep, a little bit of a wind chill to deal with. 45 at the airport, 43 at Randolph. And uh, 36 right now is what it feels like way out there in Lost Maples. Wind is out of the north northeast at 10, 15 miles per hour. A couple of uh, gusts. We've been seeing some wind gusts approaching 20 miles per hour. And that'll be the situation today. Basically 10, 15 miles per hour, maybe a gust approaching 20. Oak really shot up yesterday. It was almost nothing the day before. Mold also really, really went up. And I'm thinking that mold should be lower, given the fact we've got so, has this dry air around yesterday and as well as today. And that uh, obviously, or the updated count, will come out later on this afternoon. Excuse me, later on this morning, about uh, 7, 7.15 or so. Later on this afternoon, now I can get to it, 60 at noon and 68 for a high temperature with partly cloudy skies. And yeah, once again on the cool side, so once again, temperatures will be uh, 10, uh, in some cases, close to 15 degrees below normal. How much longer does the fallish weather last? Details coming up in a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now. Here's Officer Marcus Trujillo. Well, thank you, Mike. And we do have an accident, folks, not on the highways. However, it's in the medical center area. We're looking at the uh, 4,000 block or uh, 4,100 block, rather, of uh, medical center. Medical drive right there by Fredericksburg Road. So watch out for emergency vehicles responding to that major accident. Now as we take a look outside through trans guys still looking pretty good there. I 10 and crossroads eastbound and westbound lanes still running smoothly. Mark and Leslie. Thank you, Marcus. A return to normalcy following the coronavirus outbreak. That's what President Trump and many others are hoping for. But as CNN's John Lawrence reports, the question is when is the right time to try to achieve that? Uncle Sam opening his wallet, starting to send out stimulus checks. 80 million Americans should receive payments this week. It's one of the first major steps taken to get the U.S. economy, battered by the COVID-19 pandemic, back up and running. We will soon finalize new and very important guidelines to give governors the information they need to start safely opening their states. A number of states on the east and west coasts are working on plans to reopen, but there's no official timetable. Do it carefully, do it slowly, and do it intelligently. More testing, and more precautions. That cautious attitude is shared by governors from both parties. We must reopen in a way in which we are able to stimulate the economy while at the very same time ensuring that we contain the spread of COVID-19. And an influential coronavirus model often cited by the White House predicts the pandemic could end by summer if social distancing continues through May. It leads to a situation where every case is infecting less than one other case. And that means if you keep, go, keep the course, you'll get transmission essentially down to zero. Other experts say the model's projection, which only goes until August, is unlikely, if not impossible. I'm John Lawrence reporting.
Meanwhile, the federal government is partnering with nonprofits in hopes of developing new therapies for treating the coronavirus. The Department of Health and Human Services partnering with groups like Red Cross for the effort. They're collecting blood from people who have survived the illness and they're trying to use the antibodies in it to help other patients. Right now, no FDA approved drug like that is on the market. However, here at home, the first patient in San Antonio that received plasma with COVID-19 antibodies seems to be making a recovery. Jimmy Hayden had been hospitalized with COVID-19 and was on a ventilator. The doctor told his wife, Ashley Hayden, about the experimental treatment and they agreed to try it. Ashley says within a day or two, Jimmy showed signs of improvement and was even able to FaceTime with the family. You know you've had the, the positive result and, and can donate this plasma. It's so important for all these other sick patients. Ashley says she's hopeful her husband will be taken off the ventilator today, but no word yet on a release date. If you have tested positive, by the way, for COVID-19 and you've recovered, South Texas Blood and Tissue Center is still looking for convalescent plasma donors. To donate, you must be completely free of symptoms for 28 days. If you qualify and you would like to donate, email COVID-19 at SouthTexasBlood.org. Former Vice President Joe Biden has won the Democratic primary in the state of Wisconsin. Biden head to head with Bernie Sanders, who was still in the race when the state voted last Tuesday. But Sanders later suspended his campaign and is now endorsing Biden. The voting was held in person despite the ongoing coronavirus outbreak. Democratic Governor Tony Evans had tried to postpone it or have it conducted by mail, but he was blocked by the state's Republican lawmakers who had appealed to both the U.S. and Wisconsin Supreme Courts. Well, to the stock market now. Investors are gearing up for the start of an earnings season this week. That's after stocks ended really mixed yesterday. The coronavirus pandemic is expected to show up in companies' first quarter report cards, even though the virus didn't shut down the U.S. economy until mid-March. The Dow will start off the day a little behind after falling more than 300 points. The Nasdaq was the only index to gain ground yesterday. By right now, 536, a chilly 49 degrees. Still ahead, need to mail something? How you can still send a care package to someone and still practice social distancing. Plus, workers on the front lines of the coronavirus continue to try to protect themselves against patients infected with the virus. And going outside once again with live cam, waiting for the sun to rise. It's going to be a beautiful day today. Welcome back to Good Morning San Antonio. Just about 540 now to the front lines of the crisis where doctors are reporting progress in the fight against the coronavirus. More survivors are speaking out and describing what they've gone through. ABC's Mona Kosar Abdi has that story. This morning, an up close look at the coronavirus outbreak. We have seen gradually the volume drop. Certainly there is still an extreme need for all hands on deck. Stress running high at hospitals across the country. Nurses are highlighting the camaraderie and teamwork among the staff saving lives. It's inspiring to see so many co-workers willing to come in extra days to help out. And now more stories of survival are emerging. I'm ecstatic to be home. I mean, I, you, you can't even imagine. Steve Sloshberg is at home with his wife in California, but still on oxygen as he recovers from the virus. The 67-year-old isolated himself when he started feeling sick a month ago and was hospitalized days later. Doctors considered putting him on a ventilator. I got very lucky at the last second. Boy, I really did not want to go on that ventilator. Ulysses Gutierrez is also a survivor. Doctors initially treated the 39-year-old for the flu, but after two visits to the ER, he tested positive for the virus. My body was aching, just fever. Mona Kosarabdi, ABC News, New York. Just shy of 541, still 49 degrees. To avoid standing in a long line to mail your stuff at the post office, we have simple tricks you can do so you don't even have to leave your house. Five forty-three. Even under the stay home work safe orders, we are allowed to leave our homes to complete essential tasks. But avoiding long lines at places like the post office might seem unavoidable. But as RJ Marquez reports, the United States Postal Service wants to remind everyone that you can mail and ship items without leaving the safety of your home. 
You don't have to go to the post office in order to use their services or buy their products. Most simple tasks can be done from the convenience of your home with or without a computer. Let's start with buying stamps. You can go to USPS.com and choose from all types of different stamp designs and prices. The post office will deliver them right to your home. If you do not have a computer, you can ask your local post office or carrier to bring you a stamps by mail order form. Complete it and put it in your mailbox with a check. Again, the post office will bring your stamps to you. What if you need to send a package? You can order free priority mail and priority mail express boxes or other package supplies on the USPS website. The postal service will deliver those items straight to your home. For printing labels, go to the website and use Click and Ship. You can print a mailing label with the appropriate postage right from your computer. When you're ready to have the package picked up, head to the website and schedule a free carrier pickup. Make sure to let your local post office know where they can find the package or packages and the mail. A carrier will pick them up when he or she delivers your mail. This is a great way to keep social distancing and make sure you can continue to send packages. I'm RJ Marcus. To see more stories like this, watch KSAT News at 9, Monday through Friday. Well, here's a look at what the new Mark Plots building will look like up in New Braunfels, the building well known to many, especially during the Worst Fest Festival. Construction for the new building expected to wrap up sometime this year. The original one went up in flames back in November, just days after the 59th annual Worst Fest wrapped up. This year's Worst Fest is scheduled to run from November 6th to the 15th, around the same time as the delayed fiesta is expected to begin. That's going to be one big party. Yeah, it is. The loss of jobs during the coronavirus pandemic shutdown is turning into missed mortgage payments. The Mortgage Bankers Association says over 3.7 percent of home loans were in forbearance as of April 5th. That's up a full point from the week before, and it is expected to grow. It's the reality in America's oil country. Prices have fallen so far that wells are being shut off. Despite an agreement between the U.S., Russia, and Saudi Arabia to cut production, the price of West Texas Intermediate, which is the U.S. benchmark, fell below $23 a barrel. And Amazon is now saying to help deal with growing demand, it's adding another 75,000 workers. That's after many companies are forced to lay off and furlough workers. Amazon is also set to ease restrictions and allow sales of more so-called non-essential items. 546 right now. Let's check on the roadway, see how traffic is looking. What's well, up, Marcus? Well, traffic on the highways looks pretty good. Now, we do have one major accident uh, right there in the medical center area, so we're looking at uh, the intersection there, medical right there at Fredericksburg Road. That uh, accident just about wrapped up. Uh, a few more minutes and everything will be cleared once again. Let's take a look outside through Transguide. Still no increases in traffic there. 10 at Crossroads, but we're all here. We're all working here together. Stay home, work safe. And we've last week we talked about how some play, sometimes staying at home is not safe, but also not just check on the kids, but check on the elderly. So even though we're maintaining this safe distance, uh, check on your neighbors. You know, you can make, check on your neighbors from a distance, knock on the door, back up, and just make sure that uh, they have everything they need. Some of them might be elderly, or maybe some of them just can't leave the house mm -hmm. to get the supplies that they need. And that non-emergency number is pretty easy to remember, isn't it? 207 SAPD. Thank you, Marcus. Thanks, Marcus. Another beautiful day on tap? Yeah, just fantastic. I mean, just like the sunrise. Just, you know, back to the gas prices. I filled up yesterday. Mm -hmm. I think it was a buck 45. That's unbelievable. Yeah. I can't remember the last time. I think it was I'm going to fill up today. I'm going to smile. Saw a story somewhere in the country now 93 cents a gallon. Me. Not even kidding. Wow. Nope. Yeah, I think about what back when I was in high school, it was like less than a dollar a gallon. But mm -hmm. based on inflation, this is cheaper than that. Is. You had cars mm -hmm. in high school? It, they did, yeah. <laughs> you had to kind of push Come them Come on, you had the horse going. and buggy. In that four years, he went right from horses to cars. I could resist. Yeah. <laughs> I don't like you all right now. <laughs> anyway, uh, just take the, video, the pictures, please, because it's very pretty, so we can get out of this picture here. Anyway, <laughs> you guys are just so funny. Um, yeah, this is what the sunrise is going to be looking like later on this afternoon. And and that was my gremlin that I used to fill up. Remember that car? Um, and uh, later on this morning, as the sun comes up, we which is going to be filling this view. And notice how we do have a couple of stars out there, so lots of uh, clear skies. 49 in town, 44 Comfort, and 45 in Bandera. A little bit of a wind chill once again to deal with. Jacket's a really good idea, and you'll probably need it even up through about noon or so, uh, late morning hours, and then 
We'll obviously be warming up a little more after that. Humidity is still very low, and so it's the clear skies and dry air, which is why we are getting uh, these temperatures so cool. Obviously, cool air in place, and we still have that bit of a breeze out there because if we didn't have the breeze, we'd actually get thermometer readings would be a little bit cooler than that, but it kind of keeps the atmosphere stirred up a little bit. A wind out of the north at uh, 10, 15 miles per hour. Bit of a wind gust here and there. 17 out at the airport, 22 mile per hour wind gusts in Laredo and 20 in Bevo. So uh, overall, it's not as, as windy as yesterday. And you'll still notice a little bit of a breeze later on today. A couple of days ago, and as this loops back on through, you can see almost this brownish shade, and that uh, and this is the moisture in the upper levels of the atmosphere. That's really, really dry air. Yesterday was very, very dry, and now it's a little bit lighter, so we're starting to see a bit more moisture upstairs in the atmosphere. So some high clouds out there, maybe a milky shade to the sky today. Overall, still just a fantastic day. Few more clouds as compared to yesterday. The humidity is still going to stay low for the next few days, so that's going to allow temperatures once again tomorrow, once again Thursday morning to drop down into the 40s. Nice cool starts. Then once we get into Thursday, notice how the winds are starting to swing around late Wednesday night and Thursday. That will eventually start to pull the humidity back in here, and so therefore we'll have more clouds around during the day on Thursday as well as uh, Friday, and then that chance for some rain. But the next couple of days, really nothing going on. A couple of extra clouds here and there, one or two more uh, tomorrow, and then Thursday in the afternoon, more clouds. And then we get the chance for some uh, showers coming in here Friday as well as Saturday. Now there is a front moving through on Saturday and that's going to help with a couple of those showers, but then that's going to tend to uh, clear things out in behind that. And so Sunday looks like a very nice day, but we will have uh, much warmer temperatures. So the kind of little fallish swing that we're going through here this week, that will definitely be coming to an end by late in the weekend. 60 today at noon, partly cloudy skies, wind out of the northeast, 10, 15, maybe 20 miles per hour here and there, 68 for a high temperature. So once again, 10, 12, close to 15 degrees below normal in some cases. Tomorrow, another cool start, another beautiful day. Actually, less in the way of cloud cover tomorrow and then more clouds Thursday after a cool start, we make it up into the mid 70s. Lots of clouds, a couple of showers on Friday, Saturday as well. Temperatures a little iffy as of right now on Saturday. Some computer models keep us in the 60s, some get us in the upper 70s. I'm kind of splitting the difference right now. We will have a few showers around, but definitely mid 80s then by Sunday. So that's a big change. Mm -hmm. big change. I didn't get the truck wash yesterday. I better hurry if I want to get my. I I went and one of the uh, car washes that I usually go to was closed. Close. I guess they're doing a little remodeling or something. Okay, so. that's possible. Yeah, I, I checked a couple of the wash tubs are around town are still opening up. Uh, looks like oh, normal are? hours. Mm -hmm. Oh, yep. Okay. According to, to Google, okay. I'll check it out. I'll right. let you know if that changes. 551, 49 degrees. Coming up next, they say timing is everything in business. More on a man who started up a brand new toilet paper company just as the pandemic started. And here are your lottery numbers. Pick three numbers, 911, Fireball 4, Daily 4, 9422 with a Fireball 3. He said 2 2. And your cash back numbers, 3 4 11, 13 35. And your Texas 2 step, 3 22 30 33 with a bonus call of 3. Coming up, the battle over the brewing controversy as to who can open the country again. So President Trump and some governors have been clashing over this. So the question is, who really does have the authority to make that call? Several large states are beginning to plan for what comes next. We will cover this coming up here on GMA. Well, if you're getting a little stir crazy sitting at home all day right now at KSAT.com, we have a list of 11 places to take a hike around Bear County. Trails still open during the stay home work safe order and many offer more, re re more remote ways to take in the great outdoors or talk at 555 in the morning. Just remember to heed the mayor's advice, practice social distancing and go back after you spend time outdoors. To see the list and learn more about the mayor's talk with local children, head over to ksat.com. What was that again? More, more remote ways to take in the great outdoors. Okay, anyway, hey, timing is everything, right? Especially in business. When one man decided to start a toilet paper company, he had no idea his launch would coincide with a worldwide pandemic. Seen as Bob Crowley shows us the unexpected impact the virus is having on this new venture. People are buying whatever we make. 
as fast as we can make it. Anyone and everyone you can think of calling and emailing us frantically looking for what's now being referred to as white gold. Tissue Plus is a paper converting company. We take large rolls of paper, we convert them into finished products like toilet paper. Considering it's a new operation, we're somewhere around 90,000 rolls a week. The business has been up and running a little less than a month. Do you mind just shooting me an email? I've been in the paper industry for 30 years. I wanted to find a niche where we were actually manufacturing a consumable product that was used every day. We're basically working seven days a week. I get emails saying, you must have had a crystal ball, or how did you know this was going to happen? The fact that the virus hit and toilet paper became the hottest commodity on the planet, it was something we never imagined. I just shake my head and can't believe that even now, after a month or more of this crisis, toilet paper is still not making its way to the shelves. It's certainly not going to stay at this demand forever but for the moment, we're doing the best we can to keep up. And as Bob Crowley put that together, still ahead in the next hour, Good Morning San Antonio, we all want to be happy, but sometimes the pursuit of happiness can lead to depression. What health experts say you could do to help get rid of negative emotions. And Transky, 35 at 37. We're looking good there. So is 410 and Callahan. We'll get you updated with Officer Marcus Trujillo and another look at the extended forecast, including updated rain chances. Stick around. Bear County is now under a stay home work safe order, but a lot of businesses are not following the rules. Good morning, I'm Max Massey. I'll have the latest numbers and the thousands of complaints that are coming in. The city of San Antonio helping some of the most vulnerable members of our community. We'll learn more about the Homeless Connections Hotline now open. And live cam giving us a peek outside. We're in for another treat today weather wise and tomorrow, but the heat will make a comeback. Mike standing by with details. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. Good morning to you. It's Tuesday, April 14th. Thanks for being with us this morning, everybody. Hopefully you had a great Easter. And yesterday was so nice. I just want the pollen to go away. That's that's my only issue. That would be ideal, Mike Osterhage. Yes, uh, we'll have to wait until the updated count comes out mm -hmm. in about an uh, hour, hour and a half or so. Uh, but yeah, it, it just shot up because over the weekend, pollen wasn't bad and mold had actually dropped down. But then yesterday's count, wow. I mean, it, everything just really, really shot up. All right, temperatures. Grab a jacket if you are heading out this morning. 48 now in town. We have dropped down another degree. 43 Bernie State mid 40s out toward the uh, hill country still 51 in Castroville and yep we do have a little bit of a wind chill today with 43 New Braunfels San Antonio and 39 is what it feels like just going up uh, I 10 in toward Bernie and Lost Maples at 36 degrees wind is out of the north to northeast about 10 15 miles per hour got a couple of wind gusts out there 17 20 miles per hour not as windy as yesterday but we'll still keep that breeze around throughout the day yeah oak really really went up it was almost non-existent on the uh, count from sunday and mold it was very very low on sunday's count as well then yesterday's count came out and both of those really shot up so Hopefully they have dropped down because it'd be nice just to open up all the windows today and just air things out with this beautiful weather. 47 degrees, so we're going to stay uh, in the mid-40s throughout the rest of the morning and then warm up nicely. And we will make it into the uh, about 60-degree range today at noon and then top off in the upper 60s. I think there's going to be a couple of extra clouds out there, so I'm going to call it partly cloudy skies. Wind out of the uh, northeast about 10, 15 miles per hour, maybe a, a bit breezy at times. But once again, another fantastic day. Got a couple of more more that we can squeeze out with these nice pleasant temperatures, then that's going to be changing. Plus, there's a small rain chance to talk about details in just a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic. Here's Officer Marcus Trujillo and well, you haven't had much to talk about construction and is that about it? That's about it. One accident, but it's not on the highways, but going back to opening the windows. If I open the windows right now with those pollen counts, my sinuses will slam shut. So, <laughs> Indeed. So hopefully we'll get a little bit of relief 
No relief really needed on the highways. Uh, highways look great. This accident, that accident wrapped up there in the medical center area. So right now, 281, 410 up there by the airport. You can see not much going on on 410 on the eastbound and westbound lanes and just a uh, handful of vehicles on those connector ramps. But if uh, you're not part of the stay home, work safe, and you do have to venture out, just remember cover up once you do exit your vehicle. Mark and Leslie. Thank you, sir. Texas still weeks away from its peak and cases continue to grow by the day. From Sunday to Monday, 22 new cases were confirmed or identified, I should say, in Bear County. That brings the total up to 794. 33 people have died in Bear County as well. In other counties, two more people died in Comal County from COVID-19. Six total have died and 38 people have tested positive. Meanwhile, Guadalupe County has 50 cases, DeWitt County 10, Kendall County 12, with the first time when reported as a community spread. Today, San Antonio Mayor Ron Nirenberg says there will be new data available to help track coronavirus cases. Yesterday's press conference, he said it will show models of where the county may be headed in terms of infections. It comes as more tests are being administered. So far, he says more than 8,000 test results have come back for people living in Bear County. We can expect to learn more at his press conference today, just after 6 o'clock this evening. Well, to help stop the spread of the coronavirus, we have the stay home work safe order in place. Well, the city of San Antonio has issued more than 1600 warnings and 26 citations for people and businesses who are not following the rules. Max Massey joins us live downtown with more of this. So, Max, what do we know about these warnings and citations? Good morning, guys. We know that there have been more than 3,000 calls for violations of the stay home work safe order. So let's take a look at these numbers. This is the breakdown that we know as of this morning. Now, the 26 citations that were given out, they were given to retail shops, vape shops, smoke shops, and an apartment complex. Penalties for businesses that do break the rules could include civil fines of up to $2,000. The most recent citation actually came from a barber shop. That's in the 100 block of North Ellison Drive, and that happened back on Thursday. Now, what happened was when officers arrived, they found an employee cutting someone's hair. The officer asked the owner for ID, but the owner, quote unquote, refused and became irate. And more than half of these citations were given to different Planet K locations around San Antonio, a shop that sells tobacco products and paraphernalia. Now, it is important to mention that we understand that a lot of businesses are trying to bring in more revenue and keep their business open and going. But important to note, though, just yesterday, the governor came out and announced that there is more than $50 million, new $50 million available for small business loans. If you have any questions about the new small business initiative or the stay home work safe order, we have that information right now. Just head to KSAT.com. Mark, Leslie. Thank you, Max. Let's break down the small business loans that Max just mentioned. The loans designed to help small businesses around the state stay open as consumerism is down. Goldman Sachs and the nonprofit Lift Fund partnered to make $15 million available. It comes as the debate around reopening the economy continues. Governor Greg Abbott says he will not let non-essential businesses reopen if it will put the state at risk of another outbreak. Well, the city of San Antonio now has a homeless connections hotline to help the most vulnerable get access to assistance. The hotline has seen about 75 calls since it opened on Thursday. City officials say all of the calls come with unique circumstances. Many relate to the pandemic after shelters and alternative resources closed to help prevent the spread of the virus. Others are for people seeking advice and help because their income has dried up and they no longer can afford a home, apartment or hotel room. If you are seeking help, you can call the Homeless Connections Hotline. That phone number is 210-207-1799. It's open Monday through Friday during regular business hours, and we have more resources on KSET.com. Millions of Americans are struggling to put food on the table right now. But at the same time, farmers and other suppliers are throwing out food at a staggering rate because restaurants are closed. ABC's Zareen Shaw reports on the problem and a possible solution. This morning, farmers and food banks are fighting to get food to those in need. Work so hard. And then all of a sudden, it's flushed down the drain. Much of the milk at Conrad Farms in Ohio would have gone to either schools or restaurants, but that business dried up. Now dairy industry leaders are calling on grocers to remove certain limitations on foods. I can understand originally why they put a limit, because there were angry customers. While some farmers have too much food, many food banks don't have enough. With millions unemployed, car lines across the country are stretching for miles in front of food distribution centers. 
Customers at grocery stores like in this New York suburb out of luck too, facing empty produce shelves. A supply chain seemingly broken. So far we've probably destroyed I want to say about 4 million pounds of green beans. This farmer in Hatton Fields, Florida, struggling with too much crop. All the beautiful beans on these plants scheduled to go to the restaurant industry. To address the problem, two groups, the American Farm Bureau Federation and Feeding America, are now joining forces, asking the Agriculture Department to help identify partnerships at the local level and remove red tape to distribute more food faster. Companies like Purdue Chicken also stepping up. The company's chairman tells Good Morning America they're now making changes to meet the increased demand. We've also converted those plants that we did have that were geared toward restaurants to produce uh, supermarket package size products um, to help supplement uh, our other operations. That was ABC's Zareen Shaw reporting. New this morning, San Antonio police are on the lookout for several people who reportedly robbed a man overnight. Officers say it happened about 1.30 this morning. This was on Vance Jackson near the La Quintera Mall. A man in his 20s was allegedly beaten up by four men and a woman. And they were in a white Mercedes. The victim's backpack was stolen. The suspects were last seen heading towards 1604 at a very high rate of speed. Right now, 609, 48 degrees. Economic impact of the pandemic is undeniable. But this week, government stimulus checks are continuing to be dispersed to help those through this downturn. On the campaign trail, Senator Bernie Sanders supporting Joe Biden for president. We'll see what led to the quick endorsement from the former candidates. I'm taking you back outside with live cam as we wait for a beautiful sunrise today. It's going to be another gorgeous day. Just five days after ending his own presidential campaign, Bernie Sanders appeared on a live stream Monday with Joe Biden, offering the former vice president his endorsement and pledging to help him win the White House. With Democrats seeking to unify the party after a fractious primary, the Vermont senator's quick endorsement of his former rival is critical to bringing together the progressive and moderate wings of the party. In 2016, Sanders competed into June and waited until July to endorse Hillary Clinton. But this time, Democrats hope the early endorsement will now help shift the focus to the general election and defeating President Trump. Despite clashing over policy matters throughout the campaign, the two former Senate colleagues now coming together to launch a series of task forces on six key issues, including the economy, health care, and climate change. The goal, ultimately, to convince skeptical Sanders supporters that Biden is willing to fight for progressive ideas like a higher minimum wage, strengthening workers' rights, and relieving student debt in some circumstances. Now, it's no great secret out there, Joe, that you and I have our differences, and we're not going to paper them over. That's real. Uh, but I hope that these task forces uh, will come together uh, utilizing the best minds and, and people in your campaign and in my campaign uh, to work out real solutions to these very, very uh, important uh, problems. So. Uh, look forward to working with you. Well, uh, Bernie, I want to thank you uh, um, uh, for that. It's, it's, a, it's a big deal. Um, and, uh, you know, uh, I think that uh, your endorsement means a great deal. It means a great deal to me. I'm looking forward to working with you, pal. I really genuinely mean it from the bottom of my heart. Thank you for being such a gentleman. Thank you for being so generous. And I give you my word. I'll try my best not to let you all down. During the live stream back and forth, Biden asked Sanders about issues specifically important to millennials and Gen Z, reaching out to younger voters who he will need to turn out in November if he wants to win the White House. In Washington, I'm Karen Kaifa. Tuesday morning, 615. It is time to check the roadways once again. Marcus, what's happening out there? Well, as we take a look at the roadways, we do have a major accident, 410 Ingram area. Now this uh, accident, is going to be on the access road, so not on the main lanes. Let's see. Nope, didn't take. Okay, let's go back here. 410 at Ingram. It's going to be on the access road right at the gas station, so watch out for emergency vehicles responding to that accident. And as we take a look at some other areas, 21 in the Hildebrand, north and south on lanes looking pretty good. A little bit busier, 35 at Evans as people are zipping along. Just watch that speed once you head out. With fewer vehicles out on the roadway, it's real easy for that speed to get away from you. Yes, it is. Les, I think you'll be the first to admit, Mike has told us he doesn't necessarily have a green thumb. No, you have said that before, so the picture behind you is not your work. I know. <laughs> <laughs> 
Thank you for pointing out the obvious. Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, well, Mike wasn't, are, and Mike wasn't are, on the email list. Let's pick what? on Mike Day. Yeah. You are correct. <laughs> yes, it is. <laughs> this is not my work, but it's very pretty. Yeah, it is. I wish it was. So the weeds grow nicely in my yard. Well, bravo. Yeah. So, hey, it's they're green. They're greenish, right? They're greenish, yeah. So I'll take credit for that. Anyway, thank you very much for the KSAC Connects picture and for your beautiful green thumb. It's Mom's Roses. That was back on Easter Sunday. Beautiful picture. Thank you. Uh, boy, this one's going to be a pretty one in just about uh, what, 40, half hour maybe. We should start to see the glow of the uh, the sunrise this morning. 48 in town, 45 in Bandera, 47 in Valverde, New Braunfels. And yep, little wind chill up toward Bernie. 39 is what it feels like. 43 in New Braunfels, as well as down around Stinson and Divine. Humidity, nice and low. Nice and refreshing when you step outside. We didn't have such high oak and uh, mold counts. It'd be great to just throw the windows open on a day like this. Northeasterly wind at 10 miles per hour at the airport, 14 Pleasanton and six in Gonzales. We do have a little bit of a, a gust here and there. Uh, 18 mile per hour wind gust at Pleasanton, 22 Catula. Not as windy as yesterday, but still enough of a breeze, obviously, to give us that wind chill when you have temperatures down in the 40s like this. Notice how this picture goes from really, really dark shade of gray to a little lighter shade. That means a little more moisture upstairs in the atmosphere. So a little more of a uh, kind of a milky shade to the sky today. A couple of extra clouds here and there. I'm going to call it partly cloudy skies, but still it's going to be a fantastic day. And the humidity is going to be staying low for the next couple of days. So we'll have another pleasant morning tomorrow and nice and cool and crisp. Same thing on Thursday. Then, and this is all evident by uh, tomorrow night, how the wind starts to shift around out of the southeast. So it's not going to be enough to pull in the high humidity Thursday mornings, which is why we'll be on the cool side. But by the afternoon, we'll start to see a lot more humidity and a lot more in the way of some cloud cover. Uh, one or two extra clouds around today, tomorrow, a few clouds thrown on in here. Then by Thursday, we do see a lot more in the way of some clouds, plenty on Friday, as well as a couple of showers are possible. And that's going to be the situation on Saturday as well with a few showers around here. Then another front is going to be moving on through. And the timing of it is really still anybody's guess at this point, to be honest with you, because some computer models have it coming through much earlier and keeping us very cool. Others have it later on and keep us on the warm side. Not much of an impact from this. And so that's why temperatures on Saturday, depending on what you look at, may be uh, some say in the mid 60s, others say upper 70s kind of split in difference as of right now. A lot of cold air around the country, uh, 43 in Memphis, just above freezing Cleveland. So a lot of freezing readings still around the area. And this cool crisp air sticks around for the next couple of days, but then it's going to be back to reality once we get into well, the latter part of the weekend. 60 today at noon, partly cloudy skies, still enough of a breeze out there to where you notice it. And then high temperature today up to 68. So normal high being 80, anywhere from 10 to in some cases close to 15 degrees below normal. Another really nice start tomorrow and we'll make it up into the low 70s, mid 70s on Thursday. Cool start, but more clouds move in here on Thursday. And then we have a, well, a couple of showers are going to be possible on Friday. I don't think a really great chance of rain shower two on Saturday. Right now I'm going with 70 for a high temperature on Saturday. And then we get back up into the mid 80s by Sunday as well as Monday. Very good, sir. Thank you. Welcome. Right now we're at 619, 48 degrees. We're going to make another. No, 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 we love you, Mike. The coronavirus is taking an exceptionally hard toll on people and communities of color. Now, Oprah is speaking out, hoping to bring awareness to the issue. Find out more in your GMA First Look. Here's your secret word of the day. Enter it on ksat.com slash circle K for a monthly chance to win free gas for a year. Every entry wins a hot dog or kalachi. We are Circle K. It's starting to happen every day. People are surprising themselves. The moment they realize they can do more with less asthma. Thanks to Dupixent, the add-on treatment for specific types of moderate to severe asthma. Dupixent isn't for sudden breathing problems. It can improve lung function for better breathing in as little as two weeks and help prevent severe asthma attacks. It's not a steroid, but can help reduce or eliminate oral steroids. 
Don't use if allergic to Dupixent. Serious allergic reactions can occur, including anaphylaxis, which is severe. Tell your doctor right away about signs of inflamed blood vessels, such as rash, shortness of breath, chest pain, tingling, or numbness in your limbs. Tell your doctor if you have a parasitic infection and before stopping any asthma medicines, including oral steroids. Do more with less asthma. Talk to your doctor about Dupixent. In this morning's GMA First Look, one-on-one -on -one with Oprah Winfrey. Oprah Talks COVID-19, The Deadly Impact on Black America, and premieres today on Apple TV. And this morning, she's speaking out to Good Morning America. But I wanted to be able to respond to this moment in the same way that you all are doing and that everybody who has a voice should be doing. And I realized, actually, when I heard Van Jones um, articulate in the language that connected and that people could understand. Like if you have, we've been hearing that if you have pre, pre existing conditions, that just sort of goes over people's heads or not even going over their head. You just don't hear it the same way you hear. Are you taking pills for diabetes? Are you taking pills for hypertension? If Much more of our interview coming up at 7 a.m. With your GMA First Look, I'm TJ Holmes, it's ABC News, New York. New information about the government stimulus payments being sent to most Americans. ABC's Alex Roche has all the details. Today, the White House is expected to announce the creation of an economic task force, which sources say will likely include the president's senior advisor and son-in-law, Jared Kushner, and daughter, Ivanka Trump, in addition to other cabinet officials and business leaders. Thank it comes you. hours after Treasury Secretary Steven Mnuchin announced 80 million Americans will get their stimulus payments from the government this week, a $1,200 direct deposit for most people. If you are a Social Security beneficiary, you do not need to do anything. You will get a direct deposit. If you have not filed and did not need to file a 2018 and 19 return, you can go to irs.gov now and enter your information and authenticate yourself. Mnuchin also announcing the Paycheck Protection Program for small business owners is ahead of schedule, despite the delays reported with applications. Mnuchin saying they've distributed $230 billion in loans to more than 4,600 banks. He's now asking Congress for more money. Meanwhile, President Trump's economic advisor, Larry Kudlow, revealed his wife quickly applied for funding through the Small Business Loan Program to keep her art business afloat. Larry Kudlow's personal assets have been valued at up to $2 million, but White House officials say Kudlow's wife is is a small business owner and private citizen and did not receive any special treatment. Alex Perche, ABC News, Washington. There's a waiting list for a new Amazon grocery delivery customers. The company temporarily asking new Amazon Fresh and Whole Foods Market customers to sign up for an invitation to use the services. Amazon, by the way, is also adding 75,000 more workers. A grown number of axe throwers using video platforms to stay sharp. They've formed the Quarantine Axe Throwing League so they can compete even while in isolation. Some members say it's been such a hit, they will continue after the quarantine ends. Right now, it's 626, 48 degrees. Were they enjoying beverages as they were throwing axes? Did I notice that? That's, that's how it usually goes, believe it or not, at these places. Mm -hmm. Okay, then. Well, President Donald Trump is defending his actions leading up to the coronavirus pandemic. Hear how he defended himself at his daily press conference. It has been one year since the Notre Dame Cathedral burned in Paris. We'll see how the restoration projects are going and how the coronavirus is impacting those projects. In an effort to stop the spread of the coronavirus, Bear County is under a stay home work safe order. Good morning, I'm Max Massey. How some businesses are not abiding by the rules and what penalties they could face. Governors on both coasts teaming up with plans to potentially reopen their states for business. I'm Alex Brashe in Washington. I'll have those details coming up. Outside with live can, the beginning of a sunrise on a morning that feels less like spring and more like fall out there. Good morning. It is Tuesday. It is April 14th. Thanks for being with us this morning, everybody. Other than the wind, beautiful, beautiful. Hopefully we'll have a repeat and get to that in a minute. Mm -hmm. And how the roads looking? Well, they were looking great, uh -oh. uh, but now we have a couple of accidents, a major accident. So one 410 Ingram area and the other one uh, 35 410 
that uh, vicinity down there on the southwest side. All right, thank you, Marcus. More on that to come. It's a good-looking start to our day as usual, Mike. Yep, and we got a couple of uh, clouds. We'll have one or two clouds, but otherwise it's going to be every bit as beautiful as yesterday. You can see some of those uh, clouds along the uh, horizon right there, but look at all those clear skies above that. Maybe a milky shade to the sky later on today. Yeah, temperatures are still uh, still requiring a jacket. Uh, 48 in town, mid-40s hill country, and once again, a little bit of a wind chill. 39 is what it feels like heading in toward Bernie. 36 Lost Maples, 43 out there at the airport, Randolph, Stinson, as well as uh, New Braunfels. Nice uh, warm up throughout the day. Wind, it's not as strong as yesterday, but still obviously enough of a breeze out there out of the north to northeast at about 10 to 15 miles per hour. And boy, still got a ton of oak. It really shot up yesterday. Mold did also. The updated count is going to be coming out in about uh, 45 minutes or so. Mostly clear, cool, partly cloudy skies. Just a couple of extra clouds around here. On the cool side, again, 10, some cases 12, 15 degrees below normal. A little bit of a breeze. Tomorrow we'll still have another nice cool morning in the 40s. Another good looking day. Probably less in the way of uh, any clouds tomorrow. Cool start Thursday, then more humidity and more clouds on Thursday. A couple of showers are going to be possible Friday and Saturday, and temperatures will still be on the below normal side, even though they are going to be warmer, then it's going to be back to reality by Sunday. Details on the weekend coming up in just a couple of minutes. Time saver traffic right now. So you said two major accidents? Two major accidents, and one of them is a rollover accident. So the first one, <clears throat> we're looking at the Axis Road, the westbound Highway 151 Axis Road, uh, right there at Ingram and at that intersection. Now that one we actually do have on Transguide. Now the second one is a rollover down on the southwest side. So southbound lanes of New Laredo Highway, right as you're reaching that engine drive to continue on 35 South and past 410. That one is a rollover accident. So going back to the Ingram accident, you can see we have a number of emergency vehicles out there. Don't forget, you must slow down 20 miles an hour below the speed limit or vacate to the next available lane when you encounter the flashing lights. Mark and Leslie. Thank you, sir. Top story right now in an effort to flatten the curve and stop the spread of coronavirus. We have a stay home work safe order in effect here in Bear County, at least through the end of April. But some businesses are breaking the rules. There have been more than 3000 calls for violations. Max Massey joins us live downtown. Max, so what happens if you're caught breaking the rules? Good morning, guys. Well, protocol reads that if you are found breaking the rules of violating the mayor's emergency order, well, that could classify as a Class C misdemeanor. And by the rules, you could be fined of up to $2,000 and even face the possibility of jail time. So, guys, you talked about more than 3,000 calls for violating these rules. Let's dive into the numbers. This is what we know as of this morning. Well, the public safety orders initially issued in March March 18th to be exact, and it was in response to the coronavirus pandemic. Now, they remain in effect until at least the end of April. The latest data showing 3,069 calls have been received for violations, and they've been received by Code Enforcement, Center City Development and Operations, Metro Health, and the San Antonio Police Department, all of which have been tasked with enforcing the public safety orders. Now, the 26 citations that have been given out, they were given to retail shops, vape and smoke shops, and even an apartment cut and like we said earlier, penalties for these businesses include civil fines of up to $2,000. Important to note, guys, that the last citation given out was actually last Thursday, and that was given out to a barber shop on North Ellison. And half of these citations actually given out to Planet K. So if you have any questions about the citations or want to check out an interactive map, you can do so right now. Just head to KSAT.com. Mark, Leslie. Thank you, Max. San Antonio Fire Department is continuing to test any firefighter who came in contact with a firefighter who tested positive for COVID-19. All firefighters are being screened twice a day now, and all the equipment has been cleaned and disinfected. Fire Chief Charles Hood released a statement yesterday afternoon saying the first member of the department to test positive was the first member of the department to test positive. He says the firefighter last worked on April 7th. On the 10th, he showed symptoms, was tested, and confirmed positive. We will continue to update this story as we learn more information throughout the day. President Donald Trump defended his record last night in a lengthy and spirited press conference. The president also pushed for the country to reopen, sparking a debate over whether he can actually force that to happen. ABC's Alex Perche has more. President Trump defending his coronavirus response. I don't mind being criticized. 
but not when they're wrong. In a lengthy Monday briefing, he played a campaign-style video while taking aim at the coverage of this outbreak. President Trump highlighting his decision to restrict travel from China in late January. But he was then pressed on what the administration did in February, a month during which he's accused of downplaying the threat. What did your administration do in February for the time that your travel ban bought A lot. What? A lot. And in fact, we'll give you a list. What we did, in fact, part of it was up there. It we did a lot. Look, look. You know you're a fake. As for the decision on when to ease social distancing and reopen the economy. When somebody's the president of the United States, the authority is total. And that's the way it's got to be. A point contested by constitutional experts. They say the president can issue guidelines, but the authority to close businesses during a public health crisis lies with the states, not the federal government. You said when someone is president of the United States, their authority is total. That is not true. Who, who okay, you, you know what we're going to do? We're going to write up papers on this. It's not going to be necessary because the governors need us one way or the other. But governors from seven states in the east and three on the west coast are making it clear they will act in the best interests of their own states when it comes to easing restrictions. Two separate groups have formed with the goal of developing a regional plan to jointly reopen. Also, we saw Dr. Anthony Fauci walk back comments from the weekend about the administration's inaction, saying that the president listened to his recommendations and then went on to mitigation. This comes a day after the president retweeted a message critical of Fauci with the hashtag fire Fauci. Alex Perche, ABC News, Washington. The federal government working with nonprofits in hopes of developing new therapies for treating the coronavirus. The result would be to help people recover if they get COVID. They're collecting blood from people who have survived coronavirus and they're trying to use the antibodies to help other patients. Right now, no FDA approved drug like that is on the market. Rutgers University says healthcare workers could soon have access to another test for the coronavirus. The university announced the FDA has approved a test developed in one of its labs. According to Rutgers, the test uses saliva of patients to analyze for the virus. They believe this will allow more people to be screened than the current method, which uses nose and throat swabs. The scientists also say their tests will put fewer health care professionals at risk of infection. The federal courts rule that abortions will be allowed in the state of Texas during the pandemic. Both states had deemed abortions not essential and ordered them to be delayed during unless the mother's life was threatened. The decision also pulls a requirement that non-surgical medication abortions be permitted. One year ago, a large fire broke out at the Notre Dame Cathedral in Paris, destroying the inside and toppling its iconic spear, spire. Plans to remove scaffolding around the cathedral and this precision operation are now put on hold because of the coronavirus. Notre Dame, much like Paris and places around the United States, is at a standstill. The chaplain of Notre Dame says the scaffolding being removed is just the first part of the process. Then uh, there'll have to be analysis of the different uh, stones to know which stones have to be replaced, which uh, can still be uh, used. The chaplain says that as long as the scaffolding is up, there is a chance that more damage can be done to the cathedral. Meanwhile, French President Emmanuel Macron wants to see the cathedral reopen its giant doors in time for the 2024 Olympics in Paris. By now, just about 639, 48 degrees. Well, we all want to be happy, but sometimes the pursuit of happiness can lead to depression. We're going to learn how to ward off depression after the break. You're watching GMSA 642. Depression is a modern health epidemic. Over 16 million Americans suffer from some form of depression. And one of the symptoms may actually be trying too hard to be happy. Eric Hernandez explains what Americans are doing wrong and how we can get out of that mentality. Because I'm happy. We see it all over social media. But why do we all look happy but don't always feel it? Happiness seems to be moving around and it's not a constant thing, just like success. Can't, is it always constant? Failure isn't constant. But trying to find happiness can actually lead you down a dark path. Experts say in the rush to happiness, we're failing to come to terms with our negative emotions. We're not actually taking that time just to kind of sit still 
and just kind of think about what's going on and why am I feeling this way? Experts believe you have to feel to heal. Once you come to terms with your feelings, you can accept that they are temporary, get help, and focus on being content in your current situation. One way to achieve this is through helping others. When you make a difference in people's lives and you're contributing to people, that will, that's something we call significance. Another way is doing your personal best. If you do your personal best and you lose, is there anything else you could have done? No, you did the best you could. And sooner or later, you may become happy and not even realize it. Recent studies found that when people experienced negative emotions and felt social pressure to be happy, they actually felt socially disconnected and became more depressed. Erica Hernandez, KSAT 12 News. Trending right now on KSAT.com, children are not being left out of the coronavirus conversation. San Antonio's Mayor Ron Nirenberg hosted a digital town hall for some of the city's youngest minds yesterday. One young man by the name of Lucas asked if he could ride his bike under the stay home work safe order. The answer, Lucas, is yes. You can ride your bike out in quarantine um, as long as you have your parents' permission, as long as you're riding safely. But after you're done with that and after you st you're staying six feet away from other people, come back home. We don't want you out there too long. We want you to come back home after you get the fresh air. Mayor Nirenberg and Justice Luz Chapa helped answer questions. Fourth Court of Appeals Justice has battled COVID-19 for about a month now, and she says she's on the path to seeing her family in person. And speaking of getting fresh air, right now on KSAT.com, we have a list of 11 places to take a hike around Bear County. Trails are still open during the stay home work safe order, and many offer remote ways to take in the great outdoors. Just remember to heed the mayor's advice and practice social distancing. Go back home after you spend time outdoors to see the list or learn more about the mayor's talk with local kids. Head on over to KSAT.com. Let's check on the roadways once again. It was quiet to start, but then it got a little busy. It did, and it's just getting a little bit busier. So it's not because of the volume of traffic. So folks, uh, maybe folks just aren't paying attention this morning. Who knows what it could be, but here's the latest one. Another major accident being reported. This one just outside Loop 1604. It's going to be right there, Potranco at Waterstone Place. So watch out for emergency vehicles responding to that accident. We still have this one here, Ingram, the uh, Ingram 151 area. It's going to be on the access road of Westbound Highway 151 right there at Ingram. And then we still have the rollover accident, southbound 35, right there, right southbound uh, New Laredo Highway, rather, as you're approaching the entrance ramp to southbound 35. So lots going on out there as we go back. That's 410 151. It looks like they just cleared that accident, not a moment too soon, as we get additional vehicles out there in the roadway. but. Take a look up there by the airport, 410-281. The uh, connector ramps, a little bit busier, but there's still more than enough room out there. Thank you, Marcus. And uh, what looks like a Bluebell ice cream commercial without the cows is it actually does. up in Bernie. Yeah, you can't. It looks like a painting. Uh, you couldn't paint a prettier picture on right. there. Right. Uh, yeah, it does look like a painting. I mean, that is just remarkably gorgeous out there. And just to, you know, go drive around, find a new place that you've never been to before, and just take a little drive with the family. Roll down the windows. Not a bad idea, except for the pollen. Well, except for the pollen. Yeah, that, that's the problem. But <laughs> I don't know. I, I would almost take the pollen over the humidity because, you know, the humidity is mm. eventually going to come back in here. You won't be able to do this in the summertime. But um, yeah, just absolutely spectacular. All right, my challenge to everybody else is try and top this picture. So keep sending in all the uh, KSAT Connect pictures. Thank you very much for that, by the way. Hey, uh, as far as uh, Sunsets. Today is first day. We sunsets at eight o'clock, and by the end of June, middle to end of June, once we hit the uh, summer solstice, it's about eight thirty-seven. So we'll gain about eighteen minutes in the sunset time each and every month for the next couple of months. Okay, that's sunrise, sunset, sunrise looks pretty darn nice. Got a couple of clouds down there along the horizon. We'll have a few clouds hanging around today. Mid 40s in the Hill Country and 50 Castroville, 49 Port SA, 48 at the airport and slight bit of a wind chill out there. So yes, a jacket is a pretty good idea and you're probably going to need one throughout the rest of the morning hours. Humidity remains very low. Dew points down in the 30s. Wind is out of the north to northeast. Pulling in that drier air, 10, 15 miles per hour. A couple of wind gusts uh, here and there. It's not going to be an overly windy day, just breezy. And we do have a bit more moisture aloft in the atmosphere. As this loops back on through, 
the past couple of days, it's been just very dark shade, which indicates really dry air upstairs. Now we have a little more moisture coming in here, so we'll have a little milky shade to the sky, a few extra clouds around here. Going to call it partly cloudy skies today. Still a really nice day, and the humidity will stay low not only throughout the rest of today, but the next couple of days tomorrow and then the first part of the day on Thursday. So all the way through tomorrow, dew points stay in the 40s basically. Winds primarily out of the northeast, but notice by Thursday morning early, the winds start to shift around. We'll still have a cool morning Thursday, then the humidity will come back on in here and that's going to help out with more clouds by Thursday. Basically, I mean, other than a few high clouds out there, we're not going to have anything real thick. A lot of sunshine today. Same thing tomorrow. Then, like I said, the clouds come back in here Thursday. Chance of rain Friday, chance of rain Saturday. There is a front moving on through here, but long range models are not in agreement as to what this thing's going to do. Some keep it very cool. Some allow things to really heat up. We will have a few showers, like I said, by Saturday, but uh, and then Sunday, yes, definitely it's going to get warmer. But as far as temperatures, still a little iffy right now for Saturday. 60 today at noon, partly cloudy skies and a high temperature up to 68. So normal high 80. We are once again going to be 10, 12, 15 degrees below normal, depending on where you live. Tomorrow, another cool, crisp start and then up to 72. Nice start on Thursday and then the humidity is going to come back on Thursday. And notice Friday morning, whole different story. We stay at about 60. You are having trouble with that chair over there, aren't you? Yeah, it keeps about sinking 60 on 60 starting off and still just the uh, mid 70s and a couple of showers Friday, Saturday, much warmer on Sunday. I uh, nailed the landing, though. He should just out of the blue, you sink. I, I, I know I must be hitting the lever with the with my leg or something. Have like you got well, anything to do with this, Marcus? Are you rigging his chair? <laughs> <laughs> what does that even mean? I mean, maybe. Yeah, I mean, maybe. <laughs> Mike, thank you. Marcus, thank you, as always. 650 right now, 48 degrees. Well, tomorrow would have been tax day if it weren't for the coronavirus. On GMSA tomorrow, we're going to break down how much longer you have to do your taxes and why you might want to think about starting them sooner rather than later. Let's peek outside right now as our Tuesday morning is off and running. You see that sunrise in progress. The news you need to know before you go on another check with our chief prankster coming out. <laughs> Coming up, the battle over the brewing controversy as to who can open the country again. So President Trump and some governors have been clashing over this. So the question is, who really does have the authority to make that call? Several large states are beginning to plan for what comes next. We will cover this coming up here on GMA. In an effort to stop the spread of the coronavirus, Bear County is under the stay home work safe order until at least the end of April. But some businesses are not following the rules. Good morning, I'm Max Mass. And the latest data showing that there have been more than 3,000 calls for violations of this order. So let's take a look at the numbers. These are the latest breakdowns of the 3,069 calls. There have been 26 citations issued. Now these calls were received for violations between the code enforcement, Center City Development and Operations, Metro Health, and San Antonio Police Department, which have all been tasked of enforcing the public safety orders. Now these 26 citations were given to retail shops, vape and smoke shops, and an apartment complex. Penalties for businesses could be civil fines of up to $2,000. Now, if you have any questions about this emergency order, or if you want to track the latest violations here in Bear County, we have an interactive map on KSAT.com that you can check out right now. Reporting downtown, Max Massey, KSAT 12 News. Coming up today on GMSA at 9, while COVID-19 itself is unlike any virus we've ever seen before, a wide-ranging pandemic is not. In 1918, the so-called Spanish flu spread like wildfire across the world. A situation with some striking similarities to COVID-19. So how did San Antonio fare in 1918? Our Justin Horn digs into some archives to find the answer at 9 after Good Morning America. Let's get answers to the roadways, see how traffic is shaping up. Well, we do have some accidents popping up, so folks, pay attention to these. If you're getting ready to head out the door right now, uh, Potranco Road, just outside 1604, we have a major accident in the clearing stages there. Another major accident. Southbound, New Laredo Highway, right there at the entrance ramp to southbound 35. Then we're going to finish it off with a uh, shot of here, 281 at 410 up there by the airport. So far, things look pretty good there. Mike? Yeah, things look fantastic. This is what it looks like on live cam. Looking off to the east, sun's going to be creeping over the horizon in 
not too much longer. Going to be a spectacular sunrise again. It is chilly out there. Grab a jacket. 42 Kerrville, 48 at the airport. Slight bit of a wind chill and a nice breeze. It's going to stay kind of breezy today. We'll make it up to 60 today at noon, 68 for a high temperature. Some nice, pleasant mornings again for the next couple of days. And then the humidity is going to come back. A couple of showers Friday, Saturday, and it's going to get hotter on Sunday. Thank you, Mike. Marcus, thank you, sir. Thank I need new batteries for my chair controller. It's not working. <laughs> to, lower, to continue to lower my chair, it's not working anymore. Thanks for being with us, everybody. Have a great day. Good Morning America is next.